led by Ms. Cummings. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Gilliard. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come this day lifting up your name and giving you praise. God, before we ask you for anything, we want to thank you for what you've already done. Thank you, God, for during the hurricane, God, the devastation was minimal. Lives were spared. God, even though there is a period where we must regroup and some areas must rebuild, but God, we thank you that no lives were lost. Continue to bless our teachers, our administrators, our children, and our parents. God, we pray for this board and for the meeting that is about to convene, God, that our hearts and minds, God, would be on one accord, and we would do, oh God, what is in the best interest of our children and our community. Amen. Now, God, have your way and lead us, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our first presentation will be by Mr. Gigi <coughs> Galloway. And Madam Chairman, if I could just interject while Mr. Galloway's coming up, I've asked him to come to us today to bring us up to date on uh, the status of the um, show in the Campbell Building and possible buyers. And um, after he presents, I'd like to read a statement, just kind of uh, kind of bring it together so we can have a discussion. But uh, he's he's got some pretty um, up-to-date information that I just want you to be aware of, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you for driving up today, Mr. Galloway. Well, thank you all for allowing Scott. us to get in mm -hmm. early, and I'm glad to hear everybody made it through the hurricane. And it's, uh, We were out power for a week, and it's en enjoyable to come to a meeting like this. <laughs> um, I wanted to bring you up to date a uh, monthly report. Um, as of the last 30 days, we've had 1,203 displays on the Campbell Building. Those are electronic displays. Um, out of those, there was 70 hits, and those individuals wanted more information. Out of those 70 hits, we sent information to 21 people or individuals or companies. Um, out of those 21 people, we have um, five groups that we are presently working with right now. Uh, one of them you already um, know about is a contracted developer that we were hoping to have a decision. They know of y'all's timeline of sometime in October. Um, there are two in individual investors. Uh, one has been on site, and the other partner is, um, due to the hurricane, they have, they have delayed their decision probably about 10 days. But hopefully we'll be hearing something from them uh, one way or the other, either up or down. Uh, we showed it to an ophthalmologist group that has about seven locations throughout the state of Florida. He had never really been in Palatka. He thought that the demographics might be, he's, he is still has an interest, but he doesn't know if what he wants to do, um, if, if the community is large enough to support what he, what he wants to do. Um, we also had, a, I don't know if it was an, more of an open house, but we had the historical group that came by and um, they had, I believe, an architect, an engineer um, for some items that uh, they might be in interest of doing or maybe not being able to do. Um, but we did open that up for them. Um, presently, uh, just today, we had a, a um, industrial group that has shown some interest. They are located um, out of state, and they are working on a contract right now, and they will be back in touch with us within the next two weeks. So th those are the main people that we are working with. I'm um, sorry, what was the last one? I'm it's it's due to confidentiality it is a large company we we just um they just got in contact with us today okay um they they would be doing they are actually looking at this area because y'all have some private airspace mm -hmm. somewhere close by mm -hmm. um we have a pilot here is that what we call it private airspace not restricted, pri area. restricted i'm sorry restricted airspace and and the product they make they need to be close to a restricted airspace. Okay. So it would be um, probably more along the engineering lines, okay. technical engineering group. I, I, um, I'll be able to get more information with you. Um, and and, and that, that lead just came to us today. Oh, okay. Some kind of manufacturing company though? It'll be a, a, um, be a high sophisticated 
Okay. Uh, it would be good for the. It'd be something good for the community. It'd be an employment of people, and they would be using um, uh, the room. The room size or perfect size for for what they produce. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. And may I ask this? Uh, the price. The we believe the reason we're getting this activity. If you recall, um, maybe two meetings ago. I think I missed one meeting. We dropped the price to five ninety five. Okay. Uh, and the price is 595 and that's what we believe has been bringing activity now in the meantime we, we still haven't you know we still have the group um, synergy from from um, Daytona Beach mm -hmm. uh, they are a real group they just closed on a, a similar type property in in from the Volusia County School Port in Holly Hill you know what they paid for that Scott was that about five four eighty five they, they're gonna buy that in two or three phases I think they it was around 385, 485, and they and and as as partials that they can do, and there was also some uh, county incentives and city incentives. Um, it was Holly Hill uh, Middle School. We I can get you the exact number on that. Is that pretty much a current um, proposed buyer still? Would you call that a concur I mean current or would you not? I, I think they're still out there um, at the price. At, at, at a much low, you know at a okay. much lower price than we okay. had that we have offered they I, I believe they are still out there um, at a at a much reduced price though. okay Th and that's strictly a personal opinion okay <coughs> Does anyone else have any questions for mr. Galloway I, I uh, from, from my perspective I've been very disappointed and Mr. McMahon with Synergy, I feel like his posture for negotiating has been take it or leave it. And uh, I don't care if, if he hears that from me or not. It sure. certainly yeah, has, not been, has not been productive for the process with us facing a timeline of October. So uh, to have to deal with some of our ancillary properties as per state statute. So anyway, uh, that's, that's the only question I had. Was that sure, I, I, I understand. As, you know, people have different ways they negotiate. Right, and, I understand. And I, um, <coughs> I think you. I, I appreciate. I, I know you. You. We had you doing a job, yep. and you've done yep. what you can do. Yep. Well, you're very helpful through that whole process, and I appreciate it. Yes. Y'all, you're sticking by us and helping us, and you know. We're, we're here to, to support you in any way in, in your best interest. We are transactional brokers, but we also are here to to advise and. And consent and work we work for y'all so um, I just want we wanted to bring y'all up to date and um, we'll be more than glad and to I think today's meeting we want to you know we, we either we're gonna have a decision to make or not make or discuss but I think we need to hear the very latest from mr. Galloway before we have that discussion so um, I really appreciate it and I know you'll keep us up to date on okay. and this again the production one. company they are gonna get back in touch with the, you within we'll know within. something within the next two weeks <coughs> Now, now let me just explain how companies work. We will know their level of interest. Mm -hmm. right. Maybe um, I have an offer. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean we'll have an offer, but we will have a level of interest from them, um, and, and maybe sooner. Two weeks. Right. Would, two weeks puts us beyond a statutory deadline that is not. So, Gigi, the one preferable. company that we are still waiting for, the one that's had that interest. I mean, I kind of thought when we said emergency meeting, oh, then one of them must have like made a formal. Um, one of those that you mentioned didn't make a formal. Well, we we thought we were going to have. I mean, the, I, I hate to put. We're all big people. I hate to put the blame on a hurricane. Right. But the we thought we would have had something on this one group. Right. And they're using it as as a. Posi I'm not saying their position. I mean, they're just backed up on other projects. It's a large developer, and they're backed up on other projects. And he said the hurricane has just postponed okay. them making a decision for uh, a few days. It could be, you know, we could, y'all could tell me that based on what y'all are going to do today, that they need to give us a decision by a drop dead date. Are they either in or out? Okay. Okay. So you didn't have you didn't call the emergency <coughs> meeting with I thought maybe you had an offer and a call and said no, hey. he had nothing to do with it. Oh no no I'm, I'm I think I came in here one day and left a note. I don't hope y'all didn't think that was an emergency meeting uh, about we had a showing. 
Okay. And I was giving y'all an update. I think that okay. was last uh, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Y'all meet every two weeks. I appreciate yeah. I appreciate you keeping us up. Okay. I, I think yeah, we no. just we just came in and said, oh, by the way, we're we had a, a shown for somebody. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank okay. you. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Scott, for coming. Yeah, I've asked um, Madam Chairman if I could read a statement prior to public comments because you know what I read may generate some other people may want to make some comments, but if you would bear with me for just a minute. Uh, for the past two and a half years, the school district has made the effort to dispose of all ancillary properties required by the state. After initially listing the Campbell building with our real estate broker for $995,000, then reducing the listing to $595,000, uh, there have been very few interested buyers. Um, and I'm glad to hear we have some additional ones today. Uh, we as a district have come to a point in time that the Campbell building will need to be listed as a vacant district property with the state as required by House Bill 7069 beginning in October of 2017. Charter school organizations who meet the eligibility requirements of the Schools of Hope may choose to gain use of the building to establish a charter school with financial assistance from the state. These for-profit schools may be headquartered anywhere in the United States and make money at the expense of our students. Another option has been presented to my staff that I want to make you aware of, and that is, again, just to uh, be transparent and make you aware of what's been presented to us, uh, to donate the Campbell Building to a local nonprofit independent educational foundation. And the, the foundation we know as Liv Putnam has changed their designation from a direct service organization or DSO to a non-direct service organization or non-DSO, Liv Putnam is now completely a separate foundation from the district school board of Putnam County. However, their mission is to support the students of Putnam County. As a school board, I would like you to consider both options at this most important time. The first choice is to continue to try to sell the building with the assistance of our broker, Colwell Banker, the proceeds from the district sale of the property would be deposited in the district's capital outlay funds. The risk of an outside charter organization taking use of the building would continue to be a concern. <coughs> the second choice is to donate the building to a nonprofit foundation like Lift Putnam or another foundation or organization of your choosing. By donating the building, <coughs> The ownership of the building would be transferred and the building would not be eligible for use by a charter organization. If you choose to donate the building to Liv Putnam, you have in front of you a tentative agreement that would need to be approved by both the district school board and the Liv Putnam board of directors. If both boards voted to approve the transaction this week, the Campbell building would not be listed as a vacant property with the state. So, Madam Chairman, I'll turn it back over to you for your consideration. And if you have any questions, Mr. Douglas, you know, is here to address that. Now, I, I do want to apologize. I want to apologize for the late notice on the contract. We received that yesterday, and, um, and it was put on board docs this morning. But, um, again, uh, I understand you're concerned if you didn't have a chance to review that. Mr. Douglas can also answer any questions about that. Jane, for the purpose, for the purpose of discussion, can I make a motion? Can, no, no, not, not, yet. Yet. No, no. not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um, Dr. Serency, would you please explain to everyone just so we'll know why this is considered an emergency meeting? The reason I bring it up now is because, you know, up until now we have not had any serious offers on the building. And I wanted to at least bring this up to our board prior to October because October is when we will need to make available our vacant property to the state. And um, I feel like it's our obligation to make sure we at least discuss it and, um, you know, entertain any options that you have. Whether you decide to vote on that today or not, that's entirely up to you as a board. Is there a date certain? I talked the to the state this past week, and I said I need a date certain. And they said they would be in contact, but by statute they have listed October. So, again, that can yeah, mean October 1. Yeah, because we're looking at October a couple of days from now. Right. We don't know if it's October 1 or October right. 30th. Right. It's, we had, but I did ask if, the question. Because if we had a date certain, uh, 
there's a possibility that this production company sure. could, it's, you know, it, knowing the price, but yet Liv Putnam is, is it, they're doing great things, so. Yeah. I but Kathy, I, I just wanted to make so, you aware of that. Okay. Kathy yeah. wanted to speak. Okay. Ms. Jorgensen would like to say some things. Okay. I am very concerned, board, that this is not, in fact, an emergency meeting. And let me explain something. It's law that determines what an emergency is. Irma was an emergency. God forbid Columbine, the board would be meeting an emergency. The difference between an emergency meeting and a regular or special meeting is that we only give the public 48 hours notice on an emergency meeting. So it only hits the news the day of the meeting. And people leave for work in the morning and they don't even know we're having this meeting till they get home. And a true emergency, that's fine. But I advise us strongly not to take any action at today's meeting. We need to give the public, and I understand that now, September, whatever it is, it's an emergency for October, but I still don't think that's, so we pick from two today because all of a sudden it has to be October 1st. Haven't we known this for like a long time. I just, I, I'm not going to vote, and I strongly urge this board not to take any action today. Well, I, it's not legally an emergency. I'd meeting. like to say something now that she's yeah. had her say. For lack of credible offers, I'm not, I mean, I, I wasn't born yesterday, but I wasn't born today either. I don't perceive uh, uh, even this manufacturing company meeting the comprehensive plan to locate in downtown historic district. I don't see us reaching this this prior to the October 1st deadline. No, we didn't say October 1st. I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I, I, I love Ms. Jorgensen, but she's not an attorney either. I think an emergency can be an emergency if we deem it, if the superintendent deems it, in his opinion, to be emergency. No, now, if Charlie can, Charlie can advise that yeah, if possible. <laughs> we're looking at a we're looking at a million dollar piece of property that's that's looking at being passed over and and what I would like to do is make a motion to have someone so we can discuss this and hear from the public that came uh, simply simply to put it on the table. We don't need a motion. There's no. Well, I'd, I'd like to just as a that formality. Way. That way, we can vote it up or down or take no action. No, I don't gosh. know that you cannot vote on an issue unless you have a reason to recuse yourself from a vote. It's but the I'm not the attorney. Board that's going to be charged with the violation of the Sunshine Law if there is something charged. I don't. I it's don't. us, the five of us, that's and nobody not else. On the so we Charlie, call Charlie, the emergency. Charlie, you, Charlie, you want to go ahead? Yeah, there's no. There's no. I've been on there's the board no for vote. almost 12 yeah. years. I know the Sunshine Law. Well, I was. I, I've been there's around too. The agenda doesn't say vote. That's all I'm concerned about. And I don't have any public we, comment cards. We can. We have one. Of them. We are a self judiciating body, and I know we're bound by certain rules and regulations. Mr. Douglas may help clear this up. Go ahead, and then I'll ask uh, my question. At, uh, make around my um, 2 o'clock today, I was asked to uh, specifically research the uh, the title of this meeting, uh, whether it's a special or emergency. I was walking into a, a previously planned meeting, um, so I am um, researching this matter now. I can tell you what I found so far is that um, according to our bylaws, 0160 considering meetings and more specifically 0164 and 0165.1 and 0165.3 that we have done everything required for our bylaws for the notice requirements of this special meeting um, also i have reviewed florida statute 1001.372 and find that we are in compliance with that statute i do not know if there is a case interpreting bylaws and statutes that say for the purchase and sale of capital buildings within the district that that is properly within the purview of a special meeting or not um, it's emergency not special we are i'm saying there's a difference between a special meeting and emergency meeting a special meeting requires seven days notice an emergency meeting requires 48 hours that's what i've been taught for 11 years well, the superintendent is bylaw our secretary, and when he calls an emergency meeting, it is what he deems it to be an emergency. I would have to still, once again, I would like to make a motion so we can discuss the options and hear from 
the potential and see if Liv Putnam was even interested and hear what they have to say. I don't think this is fair to bring these people here and to have this motion and be looking at about a couple more, handful more days and expect. I have no objection to people talking. I right, just don't, I don't think we, have we make should make any yeah, decisions. No, this agenda. board is not, I'm telling you, we get charged, not the superintendent. Superintendent can does, the board gets charged with the violation of the sunshine well, law. If, if you're gonna take a violation of sunshine law, it's which we're not gonna do, and, and if you're gonna take it, and you're gonna take it to save a million dollars in a building for the community and to help the children of Putnam County, I say take it, but that's you me. You say break the law. Yeah, 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 but that's, <laughs> that's not. breaking the law? I'm not breaking the law. We're Sunshine doing what Mr. Law. Douglas just said, but let's be civil. I'd like to make a motion that we consider the superintendent's recommendation and look at the lift Putnam and uh, hear from the input. David. And I'm new to this. I don't understand why we have to make a motion there. Because then when we hear it all, we can vote it up or down. But there's I'm no vote voting. on the there's agenda. There's no vote on the agenda. I, I, this was, a, in my mind, I looked discovery and an if opportunity it was, to share ideas. If it right. was something. I mean, I, why would you think this, you could vote today when it's not on I the think agenda? Because <laughs> I know we can Is vote this not Is this Where? Is where? Where? It usually Where? says discuss. It says topic. Action. It's a, it, it says topic. Input, yeah. discussion, no, usually there's input, discussion. Sale of Campbell Building, and if you look on board docs, it's under action. It has an action. You're, but it, you're, on this agenda, it always says that. Everybody's talking form over substance here. This is about meeting a statutory to deadline. Today. All no. right, well, let's make a motion, and then if you don't want to vote, you don't have to vote. I want to make yes, a motion yes, that we. Yes, you do. You have to vote unless you can legally excuse you yourself. You can't legally recuse yourself unless you have a conflict of interest. Correct. And so, this so we don't. And this cannot come up on our October third meeting. Of course I mean, it can. I mean we're meeting October third, and we can put it right. in under right. unfinished business if we don't finish Correct. discussing it today, uh, and then vote, and then I, we take care of what Kathy's concern was. The public will, you know, have notice of. I have well, because the agenda already went out. It has to go uh, out. Oh, Mr. Douglas, can you so shine light? Can you settle the uh, we, we've got the, all these conflict people about here whether they speak. can vote on it or they not? They can speak David. based on the agenda. Well, what good is it going to do to speak if you're going to wait till till past the statutory deadline? They well, no, Mr. Not. Douglas, can Mr. Douglas make an, yes. yeah, an opinion on this? Yeah, a gold meter might fall out of the sky today, and we'd have plenty of money. So I mean, yes. Jane, uh, I, no, historically, it's been the practice of this board to uh, vote on matters uh, when they are titled action items on an agenda. Um, I reviewed the agenda and the uh, board docs. I do not see that uh, term, but I don't know if uh, that is a requirement. I'm looking at that now. If um, you know, historical uh, precedence is um, just that, or if it's uh, legally binding. I'm well, reviewing the bylaws right now, just as uh, the superintendent okay. has asked. Why don't we do this? Public comments next. Let's have our public comment and then for, under sale of the building. For us to discuss it, we need to have a motion and a second, and then no, you can vote no. it up or down. David, no, we don't need a motion not to discuss Not before public things. comment. That's not true. Well, what's, what are you scared of? Just do the procedure. What are you scared of? I'm not, I'm not scared of any anything. motion. I'm, I'm not conducting, I'm not taking any action at this meeting. I'm going to walk out. If there's a motion made for any kind of action, I'm leaving okay. the meeting personally so that uh, my name isn't on whatever it is when they violate you with the sunshine uh, uh, law. I just don't understand why we're not following the agenda, but, but, Well, go ahead. You, you, go ahead. When, you know, go, just go Can do, we do what that? you want to do. The, I'm not the attorney, but I'm telling you this is time to fish or cut bait. I know, but it's not you, on the agenda you've yet. You've got it, a vague deadline from the state Can of Florida. You can go do what you're going to do. You're, you're in charge. Okay, I'll I'd like to follow the agenda. And we have a public comment from Vito Russo that I'd like to hear. Okay. Thank you. I'll v count things down. Please. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you won't. I know better than to believe that. You, as long as you didn't bring any pitchforks, we're okay. No, ma'am. You look calm by comparison, is what you're if, if you really think about it, it's really a moot point because I can tell you right now, uh, the community overwhelmingly supports the idea that I've been espousing for the past month or so. So. Uh, I will definitely be within the three-minute mark today. I'm sure that's a change of pace here. 
Uh, but um, the first thing I'd like to say is that I would like to ask the superintendent and the school board members uh, to forgive me for the times when I get a little bit too tunnel visioned. Uh, I get too impatient and I get too determined with my goal. So I think that might be considered a character flaw. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. so anyway, what we read in today's paper, in today's edition of the Pocket Daily News regarding, regarding uh, Lift Putnam organization and the Campbell Building demonstrates true leadership in this community. It's true leadership, plain and simple. Last week, when I gave my presentation about the Cultural Arts Center vision, and I, at the end, was feeling questions, I did not have, I did not have a solution for the two remaining major obstacles to manifest that vision, and that was the ownership of the building and finding the grants matching funds. Those were two, I just did, somebody didn't, I didn't have any solution for that. But what I did know, what I did know is that solutions existed and that if we worked together, we would find them. That I knew with certainty, and I think I expressed that last week. So, I do not know whom all was involved, but I do know that Rick Cerncy was involved, David Buckles, Jim Paget, and I know Chip Libel was involved, and these leaders and other leaders developing this creative solution that combines the two programs, the Lift Prepman program and the, and the Palakas Cultural Arts Center program, this creates synergy, making both those programs more viable than they are separately. These community leaders, these community leaders need to be recognized as the kind of creative leaders with vision that this community so desperately needs. I mean, we, 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 we need creative leaders. We need leaders with vision. So these two programs, Lift Putman and the Palaka Cultural Arts Center, is far and away, I, am, I have the utmost conviction, these two programs are far and away the most beneficial use of the Campbell Building. For those two programs are going to have a significant economic and cultural impact. So together, together, you and them and myself and other citizens, we're going to revitalize this community. We're going to improve the lives of our citizens because we are smart enough or we're creative enough and we're determined to do so. I'd like to ask Wait, Vito. Mr. Paget if he would come up yeah. and share some options Jim? with uh, Liv Putnam. Can so I? you've sat down with Mr. Paget and you've had discussions about shared use of this building. Uh, preliminary, yes. And we're uh, scheduled to sit down and have more detailed uh, discussions, okay. yes. So you're okay with it going to his 501c3? Oh, absolutely. Okay. But what if it... He just what if Lift Putnam, the board, not just Jim, decide to sell that building? Well, I don't perceive that as an option. You don't? Mm -mm. Well, you well, anybody you else you kept it. saying they could sell it yeah. or you know, centered. I'm just curious well, if there's some kind of I think it's pretty obvious that Jim Jim Padgett and Lift Putman is uh in it for the community and not in it for any kind of financial yeah. gain. And that's true, but I, yeah. I just didn't but, know if there was like a legal binding sub partnership or no I think Liv Putman's going to expand there are more options the you can shake a stick in but we want to know what they are honey well it, sure David sure. excuse sure me. I mean there are de there are details that, there, there are details that have to be worked out you're welcome dear there are details that have to be worked out but I mean we all know that Jim's in it for the benefit of the community uh, yeah. I'm in it for the benefit of the community I mean this is not I mean I'm not getting paid to put all this time into this I mean this is uh, something that uh, I mean the right way to live. It's very important to me. Madam Chair, we have to do good works. We this have, to, we have to do good works. We have to. Well, before you go on with this, let's hear some of the other options that could also come to fruition 
fru fruition with this, yeah, yeah. i.e. the college at some point having cultural arts classes or different opportunities for endowments. Let Mr. Paget come up and tell his okay. side but, and, yeah. I want and educate you. But right. Ms. Cummings would like to say something first. Yeah, I just, I mean, there is, I am hundreds of percent supportive and all this procedural thing about voting today or not, that's what concerns me. I just want to do it correctly for all the stakeholders to be involved on the right way. And that's why I'm not, I, I have no problem, no controversy with this kind of discussion happening. This is great discussion. But as far as saying we're going to vote today, I just, I, I'm blown away, honestly. I just thought I, it was completely caught off guard. So I am not at all against the idea, but I want the conversations to continue as far as whether or not this happens <coughs> October 1st and we have a charter school knocking on our door. Right. What are the chances of that happening? We just since, want to answer the phone call. Since the state yeah, hasn't yeah, even yeah, given you the date. So, well, we did, we did get a phone call, by the way. I just think we needed more information to make a decision. Yeah. Day, well, I tried to make a motion where we can. I just have like all it needed to be in our hands, like it is for if every meeting. If you make meeting. a motion and nobody votes and it's done, I, that's a my, bad idea this because is not then my first rodeo, man. That, I was going to let you hear from Mr. Patrick. But my point is, if we don't have support, if they're not sure with the procedure part, you're missing the big picture. And I want to hear the big picture. I want the conversation to continue and all the stakeholders to prepare and have these ideas presented to us if we if you made a motion nobody seconded today. guess what would happen we'd be done with it well then we'd be done with it well i don't but want to be done we don't with want to we don't want to be we done with it we want to we, we want to hear what mr pageant and the lift and all these great ideas right there's a lot of then let's hear from mr right Pageant. exactly yeah. but mr pageant can you come up please and that's all we're saying it's going to end up you know, earlier you but told me that you didn't want to give this to the foundation. I mean, you know I mean? Oh, so you want to vote it down? No. Okay. Mm. Okay. I'm ready to vote. It's a done deal. No. Why would you want to vote today? Mr. Padgett, I'm sorry to bring you up in a, in a meeting that I feel so passionately about, but I'm still yeah. not through raising my voice, I guess. But go ahead. Um, some Jim, of the options that we have. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me let me make uh, share some thoughts Please with you. Listen. Clarify a couple of things um, so there's not any misunderstanding, um, and make a suggestion or two. Um, first of all, and I'm going to defer certainly to your board attorney on the legality of this meeting, but my recollection is that the superintendent may call a meeting. He has the authority to call a meeting. And I believe within that authority is the discretion as to whether or not the superintendent feels it is an emergency. Now, you may differ, but that's my recollection of his authority, his responsibility. Um, so, and also, Ms. Jorgensen, I would take a little technical lawyer uh, uh, issue with the seven day requirement. Because I, and then again, I will refer to, to Mr. Douglas, but when I was your attorney, I had to research this. It's been the practice of this district for years to give at least seven days notice of regularly scheduled meetings and have the agenda ready. But to my knowledge, there is no statute that says that it, you have to give seven days or six days or five days. The law, as I recall, says you have to give reasonable notice under the circumstances, and I see that Mr. D Douglas is nodding. So um, the concept of having to give seven days is not based on law or legal requirement, but just the practice of the district over the years. And the ultimate test, I believe, is whether or not under the circumstances the particular meeting sufficient notice was given. There's even cases that I recall reading where only a day's notice was given. On a, on a meeting and the court said it was re reasonable under the circumstances because the media had been contacted, it was in the paper, it had been posted, bloody bloody. So those are just some observations. And again, I certainly would uh, defer to, to uh, Mr. Douglas because he's a lot more current than I am on it at this point. Um, an observation, um, Liv Putnam is here 
to try to help students, schools, and you folks and improve the quality of life in Putnam County. And we're not here to try to undermine any negotiations or uh, plans that you may have or that others may have. And I think I made that point, uh, I hope I made it clear, several meetings ago when I said, down the road, you might want to consider Lift Putnam if nothing meaningful had developed by your deadline. Now, <clears throat> you know, I was involved and I know the district has been working for years to try to sell the building for a fair price. And for a variety of reasons, it just hasn't happened. Now, <clears throat> I'm concerned about your taking a risk on this charter school issue. What if it turns out that somebody somewhere with authority says, well, October 1 was the deadline? Well, that's Sunday, I think. Yeah. And if that risk becomes a reality, then by not taking any action today, you may have missed the deadline. Now, I'm not saying it was, it's October 1, but what I'm saying is due to the uncertainty, you know it's October something. Why roll the dice on that? Um, if the consequences could be so severe as to lose the option to do something other than putting it out there for people to gobble up. Somebody mentioned <coughs> out of state profit, you know, people. Mm -hmm. So, For profit. yeah, that's your call, obviously. And, you know, we, we're going to respect whatever you do. <clears throat> but it's something that as we sit here and I listen to your conversation, I thought, gee, you may be, you may be playing kind of a high stakes game here because if there obviously, if there are those people out there that, are looking for these kind of opportunities, believe me, they will split hairs. And they won't be the least bit reluctant to say, uh-uh, should've done something. So who knows? Um, and Jim, let me just interject. I was gonna say a minute ago, we did have a public records request for uh, an outside the district company wanting to know all the property we had available. So, you know, so they're looking. So I'm just want to make you make y'all aware that. And something I wanted to say, and I said to the superintendent earlier, it kind of goes along with what you're saying. Um, many people don't. Many people in our area think of a charter school as our our charter schools, as the Reading Center, as Putnam Academy of Arts and Sciences, as Edge. Not the big profit makers. That yeah, we're talking about two different them. two different things. Yeah, here. I know, right. but. The, they can come in and take right. our building. Right. And it's not going to help anybody in Putnam County. It's going to take our students away from us, and they're going to make money that we're not going to get any of. Yeah. So we we yes, got to have that mindset. Yeah, and that's one of the thoughts. Uh, you know, our board, uh, the Putnam board, is aware that this issue is here. We haven't taken any votes because really there hasn't been anything to vote on. Um, now. I can tell you from the conversations that we have had, there's extremely high interest in going forward with the concept. And for this reason, um, and you've already alluded to some of it, and that is local control over the future use of that building and disposition of it. Um, Lift Putnam does have, and if there's another local education foundation here in Putnam County, I can tell you there's only one, uh, only one LEF. But we have some options that the district, as a matter of law, just doesn't have because we are a 501c3, and we can use the tax deductibility of money coming to us, frankly, as a way to maybe um, expand the county's opportunity to <coughs> do something with the building, maybe in a more profitable fashion. Endowments. Um, then, yes, ma'am. May I ask a question? And I'm trying to think outside the box. Is there a possibility that the board and the superintendent can sell that building to 
Liff Putnam and to the Art Center <coughs> for one dollar for ten years or anything like that. It can't be done, Just and then it to. comes back. You know, if there is something down the road. I mean, I'm, ju I'm just trying to, because I don't want what you just said, the boogaboo, to bite us. And they say, uh-uh, the date certain was October 1st, which was on a Sunday. And, and we missed the boat. Yeah. But I, I, Well, I'd like to, you know, the legal aspect it's, of it's that. It's our building, and we want it to benefit our community. Yes, and we don't want any outsiders to, to come in and take it for... Once no. we, Whatever. No. No. Well, as far as the, the legal nature of that question, I would certainly defer uh, to Mr. Uh, Douglas. But I can tell you that no. that it well, I, once we there's so it, much uncertainty in that type of yeah. proposal. Oh. Frankly, I don't know whether our board, because should our board uh, have the building, then we want to plan and make sure those plans are implemented. So, but anyway, I'd let Mr. Douglas answer that. I, I think that something like that, I'm just speculating a bit, would be less attractive to our board. Charlie, if we, if, if we were to enter into an agreement, we would essentially tie up this building into our negotiations with Lyft Putnam, and it would, it would pass the October 1st deadline, and it would keep us until it's resolved if we, if we took a vote and did this. So I'm just, my, my concern is that we're going to, there, there are so many things that he hasn't even talked about that as I've I'm worked in my lifetime in, in education, endowments with the college, and, fi and if you yeah. understood how the David, money I don't comes. think anybody has to be talked into this. No. I don't no, think any don't. of us have to be talked right. into this. All right, well, then I'll, I'll defer my comments for a little while. I think we're all 100% while. supportive. Yes. Well, let's, well, I'm just, let Jim continue then. Yes, ma'am. Which I, one? I, no, I didn't have a question. Oh, okay. you've, you've taken care of mine. I the just legality. wanted to ask real quickly. Sure. You are willing to work with Mr. Russo and his group yes. to help their vision. Right. Absolutely. Now, I want to clarify exactly what's okay, taken place. There important. haven't been any deals made. There haven't even been any concrete proposals. I think that we have a mutual respect for the vision of, of each group. <clears throat> uh, I've listened to his presentation, and I was very impressed with it. And I have listened to a lot of people in the community say, wouldn't it be wonderful if Putnam County could have something like mm -hmm. that? So, um, yeah, we're, and I've, we've discussed this, uh, nothing in writing, but should we get <coughs> title to the building? Of course we would sit down with them and explore any reasonable possibilities. Is that a guarantee that a deal would come out of it? Absolutely not, because we don't even really have anything of substance to consider other than we have a mutual desire to do something better. Well, I just but want to yes, hear that there's a good would. faith oh, absolutely. agreement sure. with yeah. the two I'm, of you. I'm 100% supportive of Liv Putnam uh, getting control of that mm -hmm. building and protecting it from a charter school taking it. This is Especially actually for the best proposal I've heard. I've had dialogue oh, with, uh, I, I have Jane, I have personally had dialogue with, with President Pickens at the college and they're not ready right now, but at some point they may want to try to utilize portions of the building to do certain projects. There's just a lot of avenues that they ha would have that we're not, we don't have access to. Let me, let me add one thing about, and he mentioned endowment. I think that should, well, if Putnam have this asset, and I don't want to sound like a lawyer or a CPA. Well, you yeah. do sound like a lawyer. <laughs> but it would enhance our, as Mr. Pickens calls it, our portfolio to present to those people that could provide us with an endowment. I think it would really oh, enhance really our stature there. And uh, as we look at our plan to try to get every needy child into our program in Putnam County, we need an endowment. This would be, I think, a wonderful building block to, to get one. So, okay. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question for Mr. Padgett before I call the next person up? <coughs> Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Tom, Tim, I'm, I'm not going to try to 
say right. your last name. <laughs> if you'll state your name and address and. Tim Hotelling, 105 Riverside Way, San Mateo. A couple quick observations and two quick questions. Um, I think that the city of Palaka would be really tickled if you'd sell it and it became contributory to their income, and that seems to escape. And you all made the term of the ultimate test of this notice, and in my mind the ultimate test of the notice is if there's a uh, citizen voter out there that has uh, bits and pieces of knowledge and something to contribute that is totally unaware and missed the boat because you didn't have the courtesy to tell them, my opinion. We, we told them. And uh, like, I just saw the paper by accident and came rushing down here. My two questions. When you're, and oh, last one. You all seem to be talking without having any documents in front of you as, as if you've, it's a backroom deal and or, um, and or you don't, I'm just, no, from the outsider's point of view, it okay. didn't, you know, your no. uh, didn't appear well documented, and apparently I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, when the state, when the building gets listed, when and if the building gets listed with the state, does the title transfer to the state? Now, my understanding is we, we would still be owners of the building. But a school, a charter school, could come in and actually set up an, uh, an operation within our building. So we would still, does, yeah, does we would still a, own it. Basically, with an outside organization, they could attract students from our other schools, and you know, basically, we would have receive less funding for those students who attend that school. So it would have a financial um, effect on our district. Is so there a chance that an out, outside entity like that is, uh, uh, can provide us with better trained and educated students? Not if the demographics are the same. Not if they pull in students with the same demographics as we have, sir. We have the finest teachers. And we have a good education for those students. So then why are you afraid? And are interested We're not, in education. Because we won't get any funding from that. Oh. Not a dime. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Jerry Hafner. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Jerry Hafner, 122 Hilty Lane, East Palatka. Just a couple general questions. First of all, if a charter school or somebody else stepped in during October, and wanted use of that building. Do they then assume ownership of the building? Now, Jerry, I, we would still own it, but the school would have the uh, authority through the state to actually come in and set up their school within our on our property. Okay, and what what is the uh, downside of that? They remove FTE from the operation of the general school district. Mm -hmm. They would take our they students divert take our funds. And R Rhonda, Mike, could if you want to. Our CFO, Rhonda Odom, could probably answer that more specifically as far as funding. Well, no, I, think, I think that's a fair answer. Okay. Uh, All right. I, I Thank kind you, of Rhonda. thought that was, was the and case. Because we teachers because we yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> because they would take our students, then we wouldn't And, and we, we're prohibited from using it because of SREF standards that would have to be brought up to grade, but a charter school could come in and they're exempt to certain standards. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the second question is, and excuse my ignorance here, I'm not totally sure I understand how Lift Putnam would use this uh, for an endowment possibilities. How does that work? That would have to and I think Mr. Padgett. Mr. Padgett would have to answer that. Jim, do you want to come up here and address that? I will. Yeah. That I'm not saying that it would result in an endowment. No, I understand that. I'm but not, the, I people, just wasn't yeah, sure the people of that we have talked to about what we need to do to get the attention of people like Gates and Bush and some of the others is to, one, sh show a need in Putnam County, and obviously that's easy, 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 easy. But the real threshold question for them is they say, okay, what have you done for yourself? What efforts have you made to accumulate assets and money to fund your program. 
So if we had, if Putnam had this piece of property, then obviously it has value depending upon the appraisals, but we know it's got significant value and it will show that the district w working with Liff Putnam, that Liff Putnam's been able to enhance its ability to carry out our projects and it may well qualify us for some matching funds if we show we've raised X amount of dollars <coughs> or have assets worth X amount of money then we can apply to certain uh, foundations that will not give you any money except for matching funds. And you know, the logic behind that is, well, you get out and do something yourself, and if you raise a dollar, then maybe we'll give you a dollar, but we'll not we'll just give you a dollar. So it does those two, two possibilities. Possibilities. No, that's fair. Don't yeah. run off because you have to answer one more question. <laughs> <laughs> My last question is, I, I understand the use for cultural arts and things like that, but I'm not sure other than these endowment possibilities, what other uses would Lift Putnam have for the building? So I'd be interested in hearing that, and then I want, I'll take my answer while I'm sitting down out there. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jerry. Well, it's gonna sound like a lawyer answer because we're at a stage right now we don't even know, frankly, if you want to offer it to us. And our board, the first question is, do we want to accept it? And if so, what would we use it for? How would we use it to the benefit? Take some time. But I can tell you this, that it would be used in a fashion um, to enhance students and schools and the school district and we're required by law to do that. We can't go off on any tangent and decide, for example, if we wanted to sell it and give them the money to the Red Cross, even so the Red Cross is a very worthwhile organization. Legally, our funds, whether it's from renting the property, I'm just saying that's a possibility, or selling the property, or some kind of joint venture, whatever monies we realize has to go to the Putnam County School District which I think is one of the reasons that this board is interested in alternatives because my understanding, and Mr. Douglas and Mr. Cernsey might want to correct me on this, but my understanding is that if you were to sell, if the district sold the building, that the money may have to go into capital improvements, which would tie your hands a bit if you didn't want the money to go into capital improvements. But if Liv Putnam, receive some fantastic offer down the road, and that's purely hypothetical and speculative, match with it. Then, to me. then the money would not have to go into capital improvements. Be You're a right, that's yeah. Right. So, and, and let me, let me while, while we've got Jim here, let me just say this is not, this is not breaking new ground. We have, the old Johnson School, the board, school board graciously uh, let us donate it to the county and it's used at the Johnson Community Center, Redlands Christian Migrant, softball tournaments, community and activities in West Putnam. Uh, the old Willaca Town Hall is, is the old Willaca School. The, the Pomona, Park. Pomona Park is the old, we, we gave them the old school and that's the, the school. So I, I could go on and on with what we've done. The Senior Center, we gave them property there. This is the taxpayers of this county bought and paid for this, and and I know you guys agree pretty much agree with me on this. We want to keep the return from this investment in in somehow where the taxpayers will benefit in Putnam County, and it's not going to refurbish one room for one hundred sixty thousand uh, dollars. And and this this could go on for decades. I could see the college, you know coming in at some point and working with Mr. Paget or the Cultural Arts Center, Florida School of the Arts, endowment. After school programs. And after school, our students could, you know, who knows? The, the <laughs> possibilities are there and they're limitless and they can access funding that we can't. So that's, that's why I was so passionate about making a motion today and I'm sorry, but uh, it's, it's, it's a one, you don't get many shots or many bites at an apple. And this is, we're, we're down to the, 
the last swing of the apple here. So I'm just sorry this didn't come up before three days before October first. I mean, why weren't we talking about this six months ago? Well, I, 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 in every meeting, I kept saying, "Let's yeah, talk about the foundation," and let's talk about the foundation. But, but we didn't. I had some. Well, we've been waiting on. We've been patiently waiting on our real estate broker to bring us information, and they've been doing that. And, and they, you know, they have, and they're and just we, not out there. And yeah. we, and I will take the responsibility for calling this meeting when we did because I wanted to give our brokers every opportunity to sell the building. So at this time, at the eleventh hour, I wanted to at least us come together and have the conversation. And again, I want to be legal about everything, and I'm, I'm waiting on Mr. Douglas to advise us on what we can do in this meeting. And by the way, we did give notice on Saturday for this meeting, and each day the paper's been printed so we did put this in the paper starting saturday but um our intention is to bring this to you as a board let you discuss it and if if you so choose take action well, my, if, if my, legal to do so my intent is as soon as mr douglas gives me the nod i will make a motion that we as a board enter into an agreement uh to be negotiated at the agreement we've looked at between the foundation and and uh and Mr. Hedstrom's firm, so uh, I have to wait till Jane gets back and be recognized and called on. So. Wait, she has asked me to call the next public comment, which is June Thompson. Well, can I? I don't know if y'all ready for me to sit down. I'm ready to sit down, but um, I'll be glad to answer any more questions that you have. Um, but just let me say this in conclusion: whatever y'all decide, you know, we hope we have this opportunity because we think it could really enhance our ability to do even more but we're not going to be mad with anybody we're going to go on about our business we're going to continue to focus on our mission uh, this just seems to be an opportunity that's developed that might be really good for us in the county so uh, if you decide to go forward with us we will have a meeting tomorrow so we can give you a prompt response yeah. thank you june con I just did receive a text back from DOE because I'm just I'm not I'm not okay with this inconsistent. I'm not sure who you talk to, but I'll be taking a call and I'll leave. That's going to be who it is because I want a date certain. I'm not okay with. Well, it could be the first. It could be. So, so you who, think they're going to give you a date certain? I do. And so you think that's going to be binding? I don't know. Who did you talk to? Uh, talk to our the chancellor, uh, K12. No, uh, Herschel Lyons. Well, let's see if they call He's back. the number two man. Well, it, it's even if they give the you that over the phone, it's not going to be binding. Well, it matters to me. I just like things done procedurally correct. I don't but if you like hear something, done. let us know because yeah, I'm, I'm curious be, too. Yeah, really, I know. Yeah. I am too. Really. Good luck. Well, I don't know. Why are we waiting? June, it should have been settled before the meeting. Okay. I wanted to just um, say I'm, I'm just really so pleased with the conversation that's going on today. Really, this is exciting. Uh, I wanted to suggest, though, to tie everything kind of together about uh, forming a maybe a collaboration uh, between the organizations that have been mentioned uh, who share common goals to um, with kind of education and the arts and things like that, to form a co uh, collaboration between them, like um, mm -hmm. saving the Campbell Building, the ones who want to save the Campbell Building and the cultural have the cultural center and I would also like to just for the record have the natural history museum still included and the uh, which would the Bartram Museum would be a part of that and the Florida School of the Arts and um, if I remember correctly when I was talking to uh, the um, the division of historical affairs that they mentioned that they would need an organization to take the responsibility of heading it up which would be probably a perfect opportunity for the um, the lift Putnam that could serve as that. So uh, there's just a lot of ways of pulling all of these things together, just working really beautifully. Right. I think. Exactly. So, thank the you. bottom line is thank is you. serving these kids that do not have access to prenatal care and they do not have parents that can put them in pre-K and try to find the mm -hmm. dollars to help these kids live better lives and that's what this is about james thank you right. there, there's so many uh different organizations like you were talking about places to bring money from yes. if we all work together and tap these different organizations that's really a lot more money none of us is as strong as all of us that's a fact mm -hmm. 
Ms. Jorgensen. Well, I was just going to say that once the board agrees to transfer ownership of the property to Lyft Putnam, I think Lyft Putnam will be the one gathering yes. all the interested parties to collaborate. Yes, I would like I would like that to be something that uh, that would be in his plan that all of those. I'm uh, sure it is. People would be. Okay, thank you. Thank Madam you. Chairman, do we have any more public speakers? I don't have any more comment cards. I have a comment before you do what yes, you're going to do. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That thing. I wish that phone would ring. I know. I'd take, I just I'll take the superintendent who's secretary of the board's conversation over that any day of the week. But that's me. I'm. Well, I, I mean, I think if they had known, they would have told the superintendent what date certain was. Yeah. Well, I specifically asked a question because I wanted to know exactly too. But all we have, uh, Rhonda, correct me if, if you got any additional information. But October is when we're supposed to publish this all of our ancillary property. No, no right. But don't we do it every year? Um, Aren't we required every year to? Uh, this is, this is, but this is the house year. bill. And we've already had a public record I mean, request. We did fish report every year, and that was when we were told. Right. And so, we have so this is new legislation? Yes. yes. Everybody has to report in October. And the, that's how the legislation is worded in October. We've already had a public record to the 31st. If you do it on the 31st, you're still in October. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not willing to bet the Campbell building on that. But I mean, I'd like to, Madam Chairman, make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that out of a, a lack of credible offers of any substance that we take steps to transfer or, or, or enter into negotiations with the contract between Lyft Putnam and uh, the Putnam County School District to, to have Mr. Hedstrom's firm uh, transfer the ownership to them so that we may find a way to bring more opportunities for our young people and our citizens in Putnam County than we've had in any of the past negotiations over some of the offers that we've had. And that is my motion. Is there a second? Go ahead and say what you want to say. Is I'm going to second it simply because I don't know the date certain. And I want to make sure that no one gains control of that building that we would probably be sorry for, uh, could cost the district FTE or anything of that nature because I've, I've seen it when, when uh, the enrollment is not there and you have to let a teacher go and they're moved. And, and so with that in mind, uh, and everything I've heard is, is just great for our community, I'm going to second. I'm going to second okay. it. I'd like to ask um, this is too late. a question. I really hate that that, that phone has not run, but, but I can't. I would like to ask our attorney a question. If the statute says we have to file this in October of 2017, in your opinion, does that give us all the days of October to do it? I'm afraid that even if we, the Putnam County School District, interpreted it that way, that if DOE came back later and said that's not how it should be interpreted, that we would lose. Yeah, they don't work on normal. If I could also um, interject too, as far as the uh, matter of notice goes, I believe that we have given proper notice for this meeting. As far as the action item title on the agenda goes. I've been doing some research here as we've been talking. Um, a couple comments I want to make about that. In board docs, under the uh, subtitle of type of action, it does state on the agenda, um, it says the type of agenda item is for action. Okay. Um, and yeah. secondly, yeah. even if it is not on the um, printed official agenda. printed uh, title, uh, I'm not aware of any rule that uh, requires it to be in a heading, the word action. Um, I've also uh, looked at uh, some sample agendas from Duval County where I found that they have not used the, the word action in their headings 
Um, so, uh, or either uh, input action, input mm -hmm. and, discussion and action. Right. Um, so I think that is more of a, um, a, a historical way that we have <laughs> titled agendas in the past and not a, a um, state requirement. So it's uh, what the public expects because we've always done it that way, like the seven days notice. Yeah. So I, I don't think uh, substantively it would uh, affect the validity of your vote. Um, and the third thing I want to say is um, I would ask that the motion be amended to include the phrase that it is of great public importance for the property to be disposed of in this way. That's important for it. Uh, it, it legal term. I have no problem in saying I'm adding to the motion that it is of the greatest public importance to make this motion and and to take this vote at this time. Okay. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Wait, motion passes. Motion. Huh? Yeah, okay. You got the vote. Right. Yeah. Okay. I voted. I didn't know if you heard me. No, I, I didn't. I paused. I did. You did she it voted. too. I'm passed. sorry. I, I didn't, didn't hear, hear you. What was, what was your vote? Yeah, I, that's what I was curious because it was so she quick. Said yay. Who voted? Okay. I, do you want to do wanna, it again? I just want to make sure we have it on record because of, you know, that's important. Sandy that. said again, yay. procedurally. Yeah. Procedurally. We had at least three, I know. Then Am I to do it again? No, I don't no. think so. Okay. She majority. She, yeah, majority. She needs to know the names of who voted yes. Can we, can we do a uh, roll call vote yes. just so yes. we're clear? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. Excellent. Well, okay. Um, I, I couldn't do, who is Bowen? Okay, this came after a motion, so it's, it was really out of place, but I'm willing to let you say what you need to say if you'd like to come up. Uh, my name is Bowen Bryant. I live on 415 North 6th Street. Um, I'm kind of new to Palaka in a sense. However, I used to cut your hair. <laughs> You didn't put enough to cover the grave, yeah. though. But. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, um, I have children that go to Putnam County Schools, and I'm kind of new getting into this. There are a lot of us parents that are not aware of these things taking place, but by all means, I am quite sure that if we dug hard enough, there are a lot of supporting parents that agree with doing things like lift Putnam and cultural arts and anything that you can do to uplift these children because these children do not have it. Mm -hmm. So um, I was just in support of that and I didn't want anyone to make decisions without having someone from the public that doesn't have anything to do with the legal sides of things yeah. to be able to say that so we do to support bettering this community. Well, thank you for your comments. Thank you so much. We love for you to come back to any school be board meeting. <laughs> good, good. Nobody That's ever comes unless it's something. Right. Real quick before okay. we adjourn, who's going thank to be you for at, coming. The, at the Interlock and High Homecoming Parade? I'm going with you. You're I'm going, going and, and you're going to be there. Where are, you, where are we going to meet you? Are we going to adjourn? Who's getting the banners? David I'm going to go to Staples. I'm going to meet you in the parking lot at Staples. All right, parking lot at Staples. What right. color is the truck? Is this really important? Red. Candy apple. Oh, the meeting. All right, sorry. So I'll find you. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. That's David.